Nail but keep it sure shut Cause you were the finest one like Sailor Jupiter Hot like stove top, sexy in the clothes you rock Stacked like pancakes from top T socks What is up my wizard's dev from SBMTG that channel Down there and today we're gonna do a $10 deck tech I got so much response to this idea in this last video Which you should go watch if you haven't watched it yet um, Well open a new tab and come back and watch this I had green white Renown already made, and in truth, the deck uses Renown, Outlast, and Bolster all to its advantage. All the abilities work very well together, and it is not a half bad deck for something that's really only going to cost you like eight bucks on TCG Player to make. So let me go ahead and give it to you because this is decent. This is more than decent. 28 creatures in this deck because you know it's a creature based deck. So let's go ahead and give some of them to you. To start it off with one drops, I'm going to play three copies of Dragon Hunter. Yes, there are better things you can play if you've got money, namely Kithion. You want to play that all day long. But, wanted to go ahead and do Dragon Hunter because it's good in some metagames against things like Ojutai, obviously. Um, and not only that, it's probably the cheapest two power one drop that we can play, um, cheapest as far as price goes. There are other things, but I didn't want to use Mardu, uh, Woe Reaper, because we don't play that many warriors. And there are some good green one drops, but we have two different two drops that both cost two white mana apiece. So really want to play white one drops if we can possibly handle it in this deck. And for that purpose, I think Dragon Hunter is one of the better ones we can run. Speaking of white one drops, we're also playing two copies of Herald of Anafenza. This will only cost you, say, about a quarter on TCG Player, which is not bad, and helps us out in the long game, which we will get into some of the time, a lot of the time, against some things. Um, so I do think that Herald of Anafenza is one of the better options we can play, especially if you want to play white one drops. Of course, you can always use Kithian again if you've got that, or you might be able to use Marty Woe Reaper in a more warrior centric version of this deck, but I tried to do that, this didn't really work for me. So I'm saying right now that I think Herald is probably, if we're going to play white one drops that are cheap, one of the best options we can possibly play. Really good in long games. Two copies of Anafenza, she's the money in the deck, you know, $1.25 right now for this, and really does everything the deck wants her to do. You can just get one or two bolster triggers off of it, your dudes can get big, sometimes they can get big before they even get renowned, you know, having a console's lieutenant or something that is a 3-2 first strike before it's renowned, very, very good. Um, really, Anafenza just works with everything in the deck, probably the best two drop we can possibly play, except for maybe the next guy. Four copies of Consoles Lieutenant. I've already brought her up one time, or them, I guess, up one time. There's a bunch of people in the card. Uh, but in any case, Consoles Lieutenant is another one of the perfect cards we can play for this renowned deck. And one of the things that makes it a mostly white deck. We are playing some green cards, but very focused in the early turns on white mana, because we have to play this or on Offensa for that matter. Um, Consoles Lieutenant, just if she goes renowned, it really, really, really puts us in a strong position, especially as we go into later turns. We get a, just a built-in bonus, especially if she survives combat on those turns. Um, we have things for that, you know, help her survive combat and help her get renowned. So, just a very, very important card. I cannot stress enough how much this deck needs a play set of this card. You don't know what I am thinking at any given time. I be living rhyming if it come up my vocal is hot like summertime. Four full copies of Abzan Falconer. Now I said that of course Abs or Outlast works pretty well in this deck, and God does it. You drop this thing, and you can often win the game outright. You know that turn. Just giving all of your renowned dudes and some of your other creatures, for that matter, um, flying is just absolutely game breaking. Very very important card here, I think. And yeah, I can't I can't praise it enough. It has shown up in you know mono white soldier builds that have taken you know third fourth place at open and stuff. It is a good card and people are playing it and I can't blame them at all. This was in Green White Bolster that I made a couple of months ago and I think it may be the best card in that deck and it's one of the best cards in this deck, hands down. Three copies of Citadel Castellan, one of the green cards in the deck. Um, this gets big enough to survive combat with a Siege Rhino, which is very important. We can have to survive combat with a lot of the important creatures in the format, um, so there is that. And I mean just the base of it, a 3-mana 2-3 Vig, is, is just fine. If you get a Renowned off, it starts getting crazy. So I really do like the card. Wanted to play 4 of, but, you know, ended up cutting down because we are playing an awful lot of 3-drops. Forgive me that. Speaking of lots of 3-drops, we have to play this card. And again, I wanted to play 4 of, of it. This is 3 copies of Valoran Wardens, and it is, again, an essential card for the deck, especially if we plan on going long 
at all. It's really cool that its renown doesn't have to be turned on in order for its own ability to trigger. That's awesome and really, really helps, it turns out. Um, sometimes there are combats where you're able to draw one or two cards off of this guy. Um, really important card for us. Can't stress enough. Good creature here, you guys. And splashable, which is important. One copy of Abzan Battle Priest for the same reason that Falconer's in the deck, especially against other aggro if we can get this to come down, um, especially if we've survived a little bit later in the game for a stalemate situation perhaps, then this card can really help turn the tide in our favor. Um, even, even if we don't swing the turn that it comes down, you know, if we're in sort of an unfavorable combat situation of some kind, it will keep them from swinging, <laughs> which is always good. This can extend a stalemate sometimes, create a stalemate other times, and get you out of a jam in other situations. So, very, very flexible card, and I do like at least the one copy of it, because Lifelink is just an important ability, and I think this is probably better than War Oracle if we're going to play a card that does this, especially a format. I think this is probably just better. And to finally finish off the creatures, two copies of Kithion's Irregulars, an all-star in the deck, honestly. Very, very tip-top of our curve, which is cool. We're not playing too many expensive cards in the deck. And once he comes down, he helps get other creatures renowned. He helps facilitate his own renown. Really important card for the deck. And another reason that we have to be very heavy on white mana and only sort of splash green in the deck. I think it's one of the best cards in the deck. It just helps our dudes get, rena get renowned, help our dudes get through for combat damage, facilitates his own renown, taps creatures down on their turn so they can't attack with them. Really good card. We are playing nine spells in the deck, and the deck does suffer a little bit from the loss of God's Willing, but whatever, that's fine. We do have Enshrouding Mist, which started off as just a one of, became a two of, then a three of. The card is that good, and you don't even necessarily need um, your creature to be renowned to get that extra little gravy at the end of the card. That is really cool when that happens. I mean, sort of surprise block with a guy or something like that. It's not bad at all. Um, but... Even without that, it survives a lot of the burn spells in the format. Obviously, all the burn spells. Wild Slash, Lightning Strike, Roast, even Exquisite Firecraft. You know, there are things people are playing. So, really interesting card here in that we'll be able to survive an awful lot of important spot removal. And Red just won Pro Tour Magic Origins, so Red Aggro is going to be a very important and probably popular deck going forward. So, this is an even better card than it looks like, because you'll be able to shrug off all those, you know, burn spells, which is cool. Do actually like the card a little more than I thought it was going to. I was depressed about putting it in the deck to begin with, over God's willing, but ended up impressing me. Three copies of Center Soul. This is, again, a great replacement for God's willing, especially since this can facilitate two of your creatures going renowned two turns in a row. can save your guys from removal, can help your dudes block more favorably. Really nothing wrong with Center Soul, except that it may cost a mana too much, but hey, we get to get two dudes through two turns in a row, usually, and that is really, really, really good, it turns out. I like Center Soul. A lot. Speaking of surviving removal, onto our own removal. We're playing three removal cards in this deck, and that's it in the main. Two copies of Celestial Flare, and one copy of Swift Reckoning. Both cards very, very good, obviously. Obviously, Celestial Flare in the main helps us get past Storm Breath Dragon to an extent. And just other problem things in the format. Some decks will only have one Siege Rhino out or something like that. Boom. So, or, you know, it really helps solve the problem of, of Ojutai and some other big dragons. So, love, love Celestial Flare and Swift Reckoning. We will obviously hardly ever get off the uh, spell mastery, although we are playing nine instants and sorceries, so there is a chance after a center soul and an enshrouding mist that we do it, or maybe after um, a celestial flare and a, and a center soul or something like that, you know. There are definitely things that we can do. Here's the lands. I do suggest you play Blossoming Sands, even though they're a tap land. We're not entirely dependent on one drops in the deck. There'll be plenty of games where you can drop Blossoming Sands turn one and not play a one drop and feel totally secure about that. We're only playing five one drops in all, so it's totally fine to play Blossoming Sands, I think. Um, aside from that, we do want the two Rogue's Passages in the main deck here. I think that that is not in any way bad. Um, helps our dudes get renowned, and when our dudes get big from renowned, obviously helps them get through for damage. So I just, I, I really like Rogue's Passage for the deck, period. Aside from that, mana base is fine. You can play that Evolving Wilds or not. That's why I put it up there. Depends on what you want to do. But I do want to be able to get green mana consistently, so I threw the Wilds in there. Let me go ahead and give you the board right here, which I think is a fairly standard and cheap board, while I talk about some things that you could play if you had a couple of bucks. Um, first of all, first and foremost, Dromoka's Command is definitely what you want to play in this deck if you have just a couple of bucks. Dromoka's Command helps the deck out 
very much. It was very good against the red aggro decks that are only going to get more popular, as I've already said. You know, Pro Tour Magic Origins was won by red aggro. There were three red aggro decks in the top eight. So very popular deck that's going to be in this format, especially considering it's not the most expensive deck ever to make. So look forward to FNM. I'm sure it'll be there. It's probably already there. Red aggro has been really good for like two years now. Um, another thing I've already mentioned, but Kithion. You have Kithion, totally play that over any of these one drops. Just Really, really great card. Um, and at first I wasn't thinking play four, but I've seen plenty of decks that play four and are fine with that, so play four if you got them, but that's like a hundred dollars. So <laughs> take, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, Den Protector and Death Mist Raptor could also go in, although I'm not totally sure about Raptor, because we're not very committed to green. Although you could put more forest in, play Death Mist, but Den Protector I think goes especially well in this deck. And then obviously for the next couple of months, Play Fleece Mainline if you got copies at your house. Here are the power rankings. We get a final score of 54 points in all, which is really good for a deck that costs like eight bucks. That's not bad at all. When I grab the mic, I grip it tight to get my cuticles and chew you both to pieces. When I eat you, you'll be future poop. Just very, very creature heavy, very aggressive because we want to get our renowns off. Um, just really goes all out. And there are tricks that it has. Gives all of its creatures flying, gives all of its creatures lifelink, you know. Um, gives all of its creatures plus one, plus one when Console's Lieutenant swings in and is renowned. Um, we can draw cards off of Valor on board. And there's many, many things that the deck wants to do. And it's, I wouldn't call it completely synergistic or anything, but well-oiled machine when it's working right, I'll tell you that much. And so we gain a lot of consistency points there, but overall we have issues with resiliency especially. And we're not very defensive, although we do, we feel fairly comfortable in stalemates. We can get overrun by some of the decks in the format, especially the green-red devotion thing that's going around. We can get overwhelmed fairly quickly by that. So the deck does have issues. There are problems against control because we're a little higher up on the curve than a lot of aggro decks, but against other aggro decks, which I think I think we'll see a fair amount of, especially again, red aggro, everybody. Um, this actually performs fairly admirably. That's what it did the best in testing against, anyway. If you just build this deck, this right here, it'll last you for months and months and months in the future, and you can add on to it, you know, with rares from boosters and stuff as you go. And I think it's a really, really good jumping off point. Let me know how you feel about this very first, the seminal $10 deck, and I'll be back with another one really soon. I'm gonna let you pick it next is either going to be, I'm pretty sure I know which one's going to get all the response, but I'm going to I'm gonna put my buddy out there and see how much you like it. My buddy is Stompy, mono green Stompy for less than $10. I think a lot less than $10 at the end of the day. And the other deck, which might be like 11 something, <laughs> just, just barely over $10, blue white Sphinx's tutelage, which I'm pretty sure is going to get all the votes. But I'm pretty sure we can also make it for under $10 and make it kind of really awesome. So let me know how you feel about those. I know people have been wanting a tutelage deck for a while. Trust me, there will be more than one of those before the, before the end of the day. But in any case, that's all I got for now. If you like the content, like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps our channel grow so, so much. And that's all we're focused on right now. We're focused on you guys too. Comment because I like to talk back to people whenever possible, and like because that just really makes us feel really good, and it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm, and you guys want to help us out. You're good people. We're good people. We like each other. Let's keep going. In any case, later. Thanks for watching, my wizards.